You simply will not get results at all if you follow the worst, most overrated fitness advice. In fact, there's three of them I can think of right now. If you do them, you're not going anywhere. Ooh, what do you, like, you guys want to guess with me? Like that. <laughs> you guys want to guess with me? You guys got me on pins and needles. For reals, yeah. right? Uh, All right. Uh, the, here's the first one. I'll let okay. you guys guess. You got to burn the fat off. Oh, yeah. See, you, you, you're touching right on it. So yes. the first piece of advice that people tend to get that is just not just overrated but terrible is, uh, oh, you want to lose weight? Go run. Yeah. Just go run. That's yeah. a great way uh, to lose body weight. It's a good way to lose fat. Um, and that's terrible advice for a few different reasons. Um, one – Cardio type exercise on its own is not an effective way to burn body fat. Now you will lose weight, uh, but a lot of the weight that you'd lose um, comes from muscle as your body pairs muscle down to make you a more efficient cardio machine. And so the result of that being slower metabolism. So you become a smaller, similar flabbiness version of yourself. And this is why when people do this, and if you're watching this, you may have experienced this, you'll start running you'll initially lose some weight and you'll plateau real hard. Yeah. And you're like, what's going on? Short-term gain, long-term pain. That's it. I got to keep doing more. Got to keep doing more. And you plateau, plateau, plateau until eventually you give up, um, gain the weight back. But the problem is, of course, you gain back the body fat, not the muscle. Yeah. yeah I, use, I think it's important to understand that our, our bodies are, in, in, are either anabolic or catabolic. And when we first start on a journey, no matter how overweight you are, you, if you just start cutting calories, you may get that initial weight loss, but then the body adapts to that new caloric intake. And then you do it again, and then you do it again. And then before you realize it, you're eating 900 to 1,000 calories, and yet you're still really far from your goal. Right. And then you get stuck in this predicament of, where do I go from now? And so then the inevitable happens. You have to switch over to be anabolic, and you need to start adding calories and building muscle and building your metabolism up. The, which is you, which they will have to do at one point. So it just doesn't make sense to me why for so long we've communicated this as a strategy to just start losing weight that way. When in fact, they'd be far better off right from the gates, start trying to build the metabolism up. Address ramp, the first thing, yeah. Ramping your calorie maintenance, uh, maintenance up, building the metabolism and then coming down. Because what's actually neat about that is in pursuit of that, they actually can lean out yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. also speed their metabolism yeah. out, where if they just cut, there's only one thing going so, on. So what you're talking about is a second uh, piece of uh, overrated advice was to just to eat less. And, and that goes, that typically goes hand in hand with the first one, which yes. is just They're always start together. running. It's yeah. like, just start running, start eating less. Now, I want to go back to running because people might be confused like as to why, why would that cause metabolism slow down. Why does that cause muscle loss? By the way, the data on this is very clear. When you look at the studies on weight loss where people do cardio plus calorie restriction, you know, typically 40% of the weight, okay? 30, 40%, sometimes 50% of the weight comes from muscle. And that's because uh, cardio or running, let's just talk about running, doesn't require a lot of strength. It requires actually very little strength. Now, what it requires is a lot of stamina. And because running itself is a high calorie burning form of exercise, your body tries to get better at it. So what does it do? It, it, it reduces muscle mass, makes it so that you can run for longer periods of time with more stamina, burn less calories. You literally become a more efficient running machine. It slows your metabolism down, especially when people do what you said, Adam, which is combine it with just eating less. If just moving a lot and eating less were the solution, we wouldn't be in this predicament. And it's not a discipline thing. Discipline plays a big role, mm -hmm. but if you're the typical person, you lose 30 pounds, which is, you know, people who are overweight typically are anywhere between 20 to 40 pounds overweight. So right in the middle, 30 pounds, you need to lose 30 pounds. You just start running. You just start eating less. You know, the first 15 will come off with, with a lot of hard work and, and eating less food, but then you're stuck in the situation where you're eating very little and you're doing all this running and you're like, okay, I have another 20 pounds, 15 pounds. Plus you lost muscle. So you don't, you're, you're kind of like, well, I don't feel as good as I thought I would. Where do I go from here? Do I just do more? Do I become a fitness fanatic where I'm running all the time? And, and wow, I can't eat that much. And the second I do, I gain weight. Uh, maybe something's wrong with me, which is where people uh, tend to go with this. And not to mention running is actually a skill. And the average person who just picks up running to do a workout uh, with, they've lost the skill of running because they stopped running when they were kids. So, you know, you're in your 30s, 40s, maybe even your 20s. You lace up your shoes, go for a run. Your biomechanics are terrible. 
uh, and you're running to fatigue on top of it, which means your biomechanics are even worse. Um, this is why running is the highest injury rate of all forms of exercise. Not that we're, we can't run. We just lose the skill of it. So you just go to do it as a workout um, and you end up injuring yourself on top of it. It's just terrible advice. I wish I, I wish there was a better association with discipline. I feel like when people hear discipline, they feel like it, it has to involve some kind of pain or some kind of suffering attached to that in terms of like, I need to run because it's something that like, I know it's hard and, um, yeah. you know, it, it's same thing with like working out. I have to go to the extreme and, and make sure that I'm continuously doing this thing that's like really hard for me when in fact, like sticking with a plan that actually works and, you know, the, the real discipline of it is to knowing when to back off, when to add intensity, uh, when to listen to your body, when to recover. Um, and, you know, discipline itself is just that consistency. It's it's showing up and doing the right thing consistently every time. And it's like, for some reason, we just have no. this idea. It has to suck. You're, dude, so great. That's the third point, right? No pain, no gain, which I understand where that comes from. But um, discipline is not does not mean stupidity. So stupidity is doing things in ineffective ways, inefficient ways. It's glorifying the pain of what you're doing and not necessarily the results or the effectiveness, right? It's just, oh, I'm hurting myself and I'm just going to keep, let's say I'm banging my head against the wall, I'll just keep doing that. That makes me disciplined. No, that makes you stupid. Yeah. Discipline uh, in the context of fitness is you're doing things the right way. You know when to adjust intensity. You feel good. You, by the way, you should feel good after your workouts. You shouldn't feel like you're, you're dying. Um, and then the discipline is just that you just, you're consistent with it and you're, and you're smart about it. Not stupid. If you, if you take a dumb approach, you glorify or value the pain of it. Um, you do things in a way that teach your body to slow its metabolism down. Um, you're going to be in for a lot of trouble and it's, it's no wonder people aren't consistent. Why would you stay consistent? I wouldn't stay consistent and I love fitness. I wouldn't stay consistent doing something uh -huh. where I'm putting level 10, you know, effort and getting a one in terms of, uh, results. It's like, why would anybody do that? Right? So, the discipline is really in, in the consistency, but of course, what plays a role in that consistency is, you know, how smart are you? A much smarter approach would be strength training. Strength training preserves muscle because it, the direct adaptation from that is because you're telling your body to get stronger, it needs the muscle. Then, rather than just eating less, you feed yourself appropriately to fuel that muscle, speed up the metabolism. Now we're setting ourselves up uh, for success. This is where you get the long term success. That old approach of just running, eating less, keep going until you throw up, just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I feel like this is really the the theme of what I'm trying to teach through this whole yeah. YouTube, you know, thing that I'm doing, series that I'm doing right now. I mean, this is pretty much, this is what was so great about this tip that you chose today is like, I mean, this is the message. Yeah, fits right in. It's exactly what is, I'm trying to communicate. You're showing it. As yeah, exactly. I'm like step by step every single day, and it's it's crazy to think though how I still am getting questions around this type of stuff though. It's just like, are you not watching? Are you like, are you looking at the intensity that I'm applying right now? Like, look at the weight that I'm moving. Look at like how little effort I'm putting towards crushing myself in the gym. So, so let's give some context because I mm -hmm. know you got your results from your first <laughs> check in since you started. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna let everybody know ahead right now, just so you just stay tuned. The results are shocking. Yeah. Like, like literally shocking. Um, I had, we had a prediction. an idea, but it was I, even. I predicted the shocking I, result. I think I crushed those. You, you, you crushed the idea. <laughs> it was, and I, you know, I knew it was crazy because I could tell. I look at you and I look vastly different than you did, you know, four weeks uh, when you had started four weeks before, right? Okay. So, some context. So, Adam stopped working out, had some stressful things happen in his family, didn't exercise for like three Injury. months. It was injured. Uh, diet was just whatever. Um, so he lost a lot of muscle, um, previously at one point was a professional physique competitor. So he had t way more muscle before he's got all that muscle memory working for him. That's important. We'll get into why that's important once he gives us kind of what happened. But what he did is he's doing this kind of comeback and he's showing everybody what it looks like to rebuild your body, not from a, like, look how awesome I am, but rather this is the appropriate amount of training you need to do when you're coming back from a layoff and it's way less than people think, way less. So when, maybe talk about, before we get to your results, because people are gonna be blown away, what did your workouts look like those first couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, for those that aren't watching, because it's document, all documented. Yeah, it's documented, so you can go back and literally see set for set, rep for rep, what I've done. Um, and anything that I did at home, which I did three workouts at home, 
which were normally really light and easy. Uh, but two exercises uh, a day, five to six days a week. The goal was six. Sometimes I only got five days. So five to six days a week, two exercises. And the intensity were like on a one to 10. Uh, well, for me, I would say like a five. Yeah. So yeah. moderate at best. Very, yeah. Very, very moderate, um, at best. I mean, I never, never, never did a single set to failure. Um, always left the, like you hear me communicate this during the series, like I'll do an exercise. Right. And, um, let's say it's the, it was the second time coming around to do a barbell back squat. And by the way, I started at like one thirty five, and then the next time I'm doing, uh, you know, one thirty. I think I did like an extra 20 pounds or something like that. And I'm like, oh man, I feel good. I want to do more. I can do more. I know I can do more. And then I, I would reserve that and I'd explain to the camera that I don't need to because I know that the previous week I only did this much. So I'm already progressively overloading because I've added 20 something pounds. And even though my ego and my brain and even my body is telling me, oh, I could do more. I, I'm going, why? Because three weeks ago I was doing nothing. Last week I was doing 135. This week I'm doing like 155. Let me so add something real quick, Adam, to a little context too. It's not that you're saying, why should I do more? Because you want to make it easy on yourself. It's doing more than is necessary would have slowed down your progress. It's going to overreach. It, it'll get, it, it, you're doing more damage than is necessary. That's right. And which means you're going to progress slower. So it's not that you're like, I just want to make it easy. You're trying to do it smart. I mean, the, the whole point of this is literally to the thing that we've I've said at a nauseum on this podcast, right? The goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. So when I approach these workouts, it's always like, okay, what is the bare minimum I need to do to my body to give it the most results? I'm trying to find that sweet spot. And you hear during the series that I'm not 100%. There's times where I thought, oh, I should easily be able to do this. And then I pay for it. Two days, I'm really, really sore. I'm like, ah, shit, I did too much. So next time I'm rem reminding myself that as I approach it, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm paying attention to these lifts. I'm paying attention to what I did the week before. If I'm increasing the weight or rep at all, I know I'm progressively overloading the body. I know that means I'm sending a signal that we need more muscle than what we had needed last week. What was the feel that you're looking for afterwards? You're looking just kind of feel good. Yeah. So I want to feel, I want to feel like mild soreness. Like I want to feel like I worked it out, right? Like I want, um, I want to, I want to have done legs yesterday and then today be like, oh, okay, I can. I can feel I trained him yeah. yesterday. You Not know? like I can't walk. Oh, yeah. No, I don't want to <laughs> have the, you know, like, oh, you know, when you sit down, like that's way overreaching, yeah. way overreaching. Now, you did the same thing with diet. You you also, because this is the other part of this, is you're doing the, the the least amount of, the least amount for the most change with workouts. You're also doing that with diet. It's that's not right. like you jumped in from like not watching my diet to like this crazy structured, perfect bodybuilder diet. You went step by step. So what did that look like? So first steps was just to track. So before I even said I'm going to set a goal or I'm going to make things, let's find out what I'm doing. And the first week of just tracking, I I was what I th figured, which was I was grossly under eating protein, like really, really low, like sometimes not even hitting 100 grams of protein. In addition to that, I was barely hitting 2000 calories. And so I knew that, OK, after I've tracked and figured that out baseline, I'm like, well, first goal is let's just try and get that protein, which I knew I was probably going to fall even short still, but I'm going to go, if I can get from 100 up to like 150. So that was it. That was one. it. Just like starting, which means I'm going to have to increase at least one to two meals of a day that are high protein. And then I also wasn't setting any like crazy parameters of I can't have this, I can't eat that. It was like, I'm going to eat when I'm hungry and I'm going to make the meals protein centric, which would solve that problem, right? If I'm not, if I'm low on protein and I allow myself to eat whenever I'm hungry, just make a protein centric meal. And then let's see where the calories fall. That first week after that of doing that, they were landing right around 2,400 calories or so. Okay. So, so 400 calorie bump, mostly yep, from protein. Yep, exactly. And so, but still falling a little short, you know, mm -hmm. and then the following week after that, it was like, okay, let's really try and, and be aggressive about hitting the 200 grand. So now I'm like a little more planning is happening. I'm like, getting up a little bit earlier, having like the 30 grams of oatmeal. I'm adding shakes where I need to, like in the day or at the end of the night, I'm adding that in there if I need to. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Are you struggling to get a flat midsection, a flat tummy? We have a free flat tummy guide. In there, we give you strategies, techniques, exercises, nutrition tips on how to get a flat tummy. You can get it right now. It's totally free by clicking on the link in the description below. Now supplements, what are you adding? Any Consistently with EAAs because of that. Creatine. Yes. Creatine and essential amino Yeah, and this is not, so I don't. I guess I should just close. I did this on the, th the thing too. It's like, I, I always take uh, vitamin D and magnesium because I'm yeah, deficient. That's consistent. Right. But I'm the deficient. changes were The changes were creatine consistently, sodium twice a day also. I bumped that because- Element T? Yeah, element T twice a day. Yeah. And then the EAAs, 
I was taking between one and three servings a day of it based off of how low okay. I was. Okay. And since I was... So protein's low, EAA is higher. Yes. Okay. So the way I looked at it was if I knew I was hitting well under 200, which I was for like the first two and a half, three weeks, I was taking EAAs three times a day. Then as I got closer to 200, I started taking them like twice a day. Got it. And then even now, I still take them at least once just because of what okay. the conversation we had and even the benefits of that, right? It was just like, I'm not crushing protein. If mm -hmm. I was hitting protein at 250 and above, I wouldn't even worry about it. But I'm like, my good days are 200 to 210 has been okay. a, a good day. Okay. So, so we're, so, okay. So again, four weeks later. So this is the process you started again. And we'll talk about this a little bit more because people are going to trip out when they hear these, <laughs> what happened in four weeks and you've got all the tests. It's all legit. Uh, in a four week period. Now I predicted just from looking at you, cause I could see some big changes happen. I predicted a 13 pound lean body mass gain with a four pound body fat loss. By the way, that would have been crazy had that been what you did in 30 days. <laughs> but I also understand muscle memory. And I want people to really understand this. When you have a lot of muscle that you've carried for years and years and years and years, which Adam did, and then you lose a lot of it, gaining it back, you if you do things right, by the way, people gain muscle back with muscle memory doing things wrong. That's how powerful muscle memory is. That's so right. you, they do things wrong and they still gain muscle back. But Adam, being a smart guy that he is, experienced, did everything right. And then he had the the crazy turbo charge of muscle memory, which is remarkably powerful. It's remarkably powerful. This is epigenetic, ladies and gentlemen. Like you, you are super anabolic when you tap into old muscle that you had on your body mm -hmm. for years. Cause he for this for at least two decades you had this much muscle. Yeah. Lost a bunch of it, gaining it back. So I predicted 13 pounds of muscle, four pounds of fat loss. The test you came back blew that away, yeah. and I was confident what yeah. I said. Yeah. What did you? What was it? What so was it was. It? Uh, I ended up uh, losing five pounds of fat, cool. and I gained eighteen pounds of muscle. Eighteen, dude. <laughs> well, <laughs> well yeah. lean body mass because that includes yeah water. That's yes, and, and, yeah. and what's going to happen is is you're you're holding more. Yeah, I'm eating more calories. I'm drinking more water. So my your muscle, muscles are seventy yeah, percent, and I have anyway. creatine. So I'm probably definitely. I mean, I definitely attribute three to three to five pounds. Right away to that. Which which is not, a, this is all good, by the way. This isn't just, oh, it's water. Not yeah, yeah. Intramuscular water is good. It's They're hydrated, they're full, they're pumped. 70% uh, of your muscle is water and, and fluid. Mm -hmm. So when you can gain intracellular or intramuscular water, it's a good thing. But I mean, take that five pounds away. We still are talking about 13. Bro, true. take 10 pounds away. You gain yeah. eight pounds of lean yeah. tissue. Yeah, yeah. So in we, 30 we, days. we still put a solid 10 pounds of pure, pure muscle on. And, and, and most importantly, and what I think I'm probably most proud of, because I didn't know for sure, right? I didn't know what to expect, to be honest, like, because um, I had never come from a place of have lost that much muscle before. That um, was the lowest lean body mass you had in a long time. Yeah. Because yeah. I asked you, when was the yeah. last time you think you had that low a lean body mass? And you said probably what your teen. Yeah. And to your point that I think is a really important point is I've fallen off the wagon and came back uh, many times and rebuilt muscle. But in the past, I don't think I was as dialed um, as this. And so in the past, I probably would put would have put five pounds of muscle on and it, you would have been happy, right? Because yeah. everyone would have been like, oh, you had a five pounds of muscle in a month. In a That's month awesome. Miraculous. And yet I probably would have done it in such a terrible fashion. I would have been overtrained, yeah. doing way too much, trying way too, like just way too much. And I would have got way less results. So what was most interesting for me was to see how I just really kind of cruised through this month as far as the effort towards it and the uh, discipline around diet. And everything. it was very, very, very... Uh, loose as far as like i didn't put hard parameters even when i was uh doing my calories because a lot of people have asked a lot of questions specifically with the calories like listen i know that i've incrementally increased because i went from 2000 to about 22 to 2400 to about 26 to 2800 and then eventually to 3000 3200 but all that could easily be off three to five hundred calories north or south a little bit because I'm guesstimating and I'm eating out still. I'm not like weighing my, like when I'm like competing, I'm weighing and tracking and everything. I'm like, I wasn't doing that. I was no, just, no, you have, this is the first four weeks. You have 15 more levers you could pull. Plenty, yeah. exactly. You literally pulled one lever, which is start strength training, but it's appropriate. And there's a there's another 15 levers there you could pull. And the other one was hit protein, mm -hmm. but there's still another That's 15. That's what everybody's tripping out. It's like you weren't 
pulling all the levers no, right out of the right. gates and you get those kind of results and yep. you still have all that out in front of you. And, and that's exactly, and that's the point, right? And you would have you, you would have gotten worse results by doing had you more. done more. Than by Absolutely. Doing more. People that, don't understand that. We tell this we tell this to people all the time. By the way, this isn't just true for muscle memory. This is true for somebody just starting out in fitness. If you do more than is necessary, you'll get worse results. Period. End of story. Yeah. I, it's unfortunate that, that that message isn't sent enough. Um, I don't know. That's a, probably what's exciting about doing this whole thing was we we preach that a lot. We talk a lot about, it, but there's yeah. not. A, it's not like any of us are beginners, so we don't get to show like a beginning yeah. journey. So, but this is the closest thing to that. Like, I know I'm not a beginner. I have muscle memory, so the obviously it's a the, great visual of what we always describe. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and it's and and I also really appreciated. So the, one of the things I love about you know the the documenting part here and announcing it on air where it's like the accountability piece. So there's two things I found that have been really interesting for me. One, obviously I, the, the accountability piece that I was aware of, which is which is why I hadn't said anything before. It's like I know once I say yeah, it, everybody like, knows that. <laughs> you yeah, gotta keep going. Yeah, yeah. I just I'm not the type of person to say some bullshit and not do it. So I'm gonna <laughs> do it right. So there's that accountability. The other accountability piece that uh, really helped was knowing that Dylan is videoing all my workouts. Many times I had I checked my ego that I had to be honest with myself that even knowing what I know I need to do, even all the things I say, I probably would have let ego creep in if there was no... So you would have overdone it. I would have overdone it, for sure. That's so, how insidious it is. It, that is how insidious it is. Yeah. Like, I'm literally like... Like, you know better. Yeah. I know better. And it's like, only because I need to... I need, it's like, and what kept me was like, I need to prove this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need I to show... Like the, the camera would have been even worse for me to yeah. like... Oh, you know, push it harder. Oh, I'm going to, you know... Well, I'm just, on camera now. Yeah. Yeah. Justin's the guy doing the, the video demos for exercises, and he has to add, like, the way he works out. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are you doing? Your demo? That would have been a big check, for sure. So yeah. that's, that's good. So I, t I mean, I totally like, I mean, you guys, I never, uh, bro, you gained a pound of muscle more than a pound of muscle every, every two days, every, every other day, Nuts. every other day. What now? So, okay. So here's another question. Typically the way that the body progresses, like we see this with clients is it's not like this super linear consistent. It's like little, like little spurts of growth or yeah. did you notice that? Was it like, totally. I had, so you, there's a point, um, where in the videos, uh, that, uh, I, I start to cover up. So uh, early on, I was just wearing whatever clothes. Then I started wearing like these like double X shirts. And I communicate that to the audience that there is actually a psychological strategy of why I do that. Because because of that, I, and I say this, like your results aren't linear. It's not like I just get better and better every week, even though I'm doing everything I'm supposed yeah. to. And so sometimes what I'll do is, of course, when I'm feeling good, I like to ride that way. But then when I start to feel that that like questioning how I look or I don't like, I notice cover that I, I cover up, I cover up in baggy clothes. And I, I like, I, I'm like, stay the course. I don't want to be distracted. Don't be distracted by this yeah. lull yeah. that you're in right now. And so that's like a legit strategy that I it's do. Time. And so I yeah. went through like two weeks of like kind of covering up and then I pull off in two weeks and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm doing better. So it's like, it's a total strategy. Now, what did it, how does it feel on your body to progress? Cause you've never, You've never progressed that quickly, right? You've no. never been able to come back from muscle memory like that. Yeah, yeah. What does that feel like, you know, growing that fast with muscle, losing fat like that, uh, you know, progressing? And it's four weeks. It's 30 days. What did that feel like? It, it, you know, or were you trying to stay disconnected so you don't mess with your head? Uh, like, there was periods where I tried to stay disconnected, but I have to say that I was pretty, um, I was pretty surprised. Um I was I had lost so much muscle and I was I had a ways to go that I didn't um I didn't know how well this first I didn't know how well it would go. Like I of course I had intentions and I expected but I also wanted to be careful not to like cuz I know that how this game works too is like like let's say the next 4 weeks you know how disappointing it's going to be when I only add 4 pounds of muscle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean that's still positive. I'm still right. moving the right direction. It's still a good thing. A pound of muscle a week is remarkable. Right, People right. I mean, I know, <laughs> but like how I much know. that could mess with you psychologically? Yeah. I just did 18, right? So the thought is you can't help but go like, well I can do another 18. Yeah, well, shouldn't yeah. I? I got plenty to go, right? So you know th there's that part too of where I didn't want to get uh overly excited or you know fixated too much on what I was seeing, but I remember telling Katrina I'm like, man, I'm I'm shaping up pretty quick. Uh, considering now, is she commenting or did you tell her, don't tell me? Yeah, I mean, she gets all, she gets mad about it. She doesn't like it. Uh, <laughs> she gets too her. attractive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it annoys her, right? Yeah. She's like, I cannot stand <laughs> it. I feel like you. you just, you, you, you focus on two weeks. She, uh, she says it's two weeks. I feel like it's long. Bro, this enough. is the analogy that I like yeah. to give. It's like two people digging a big ass hole and one guy has a spoon, the other guy has a backhoe. 
yeah. and you look over at the guy with the backhoe, you're like, what's going on? You, you, how did you do that so quickly? Yeah. He's using a backhoe. Like you are, you're, you're doing things the right way. Yeah. You've got muscle memory on your side. That's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens. And when you do things the wrong way, here's what's hard. I think people understand when they don't progress that maybe they're doing things wrong. Although sometimes it's hard to convince them sometimes then. It's impossible to convince someone who's still making progress and they're doing things wrong. Because had you yeah. overtrained, uh -huh. you still would have gained some muscle over the last four, four weeks. You, would, you might even gain five pounds of muscle. And imagine if I came to you, I'm like, dude, you're doing things wrong right now. Uh, what yeah. are you talking about? I gained five pounds yeah. of muscle. Especially you, where you were, you know, exactly. a while back. Yeah, that, that is that, definitely- The potential is there. The, the easiest I've ever, of all, and I know I preach this, but I know that because of the camera, I was even more disciplined to like staying true to what I say about like only applying the least amount, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this was the most I've ever stayed true to that in a, in a four week period of time of getting back in the swing of things. And uh, I'm glad I did because, you know, there, like I said, many times the ego crept in. I wanted to do more. Like I felt that. And, and I was like, no, no, just keep doing what you're doing. You know what you're doing. And, and then to see it revealed that way, I was like, man, that's, that's why, it, it, so there's a little bit of that surprise, even a little bit of me is surprised. Like, damn, the crazy thing that I didn't do one set to failure. I never once hit a weight. I always left way more I could have done on the bar right now. Like I didn't get crazy on like the diet restrictions or anything like that. I just hit the protein intake, stimulate the muscle just enough to where I feel it when I work out, like really, really, really simple. And here's a part two that like, I was explaining this to somebody that was, uh, uh, I was talking on a video about this is, um, I I'm, I'm missing one of the three biggest muscle groups. Oh, yeah, you have a pec injury. Can't even yeah. your chest. I mean, that's, that would have been another two. That's pounds a strength of mine too. Mm -hmm. Like that. I mean, that, that's at least another couple pounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, cause someone was just like, Oh, do you think that helped you or hurt you in this process? I was like, hurt for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, cause you imagine if I didn't <laughs> have my legs, I'm like, thank groups. God I had my legs to really get yeah. after. And like, cause a big part of obviously that weight that came back was my legs. Where do you feel most of the, the, the gains? Legs. legs yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. My leg, my legs definitely, uh, came up the, the biggest, which is expected. It's the biggest Muscle, right? muscle. Yeah. yeah and i really didn't hit the back that hard either because of even because of the chest right it's the antagonist so i didn't get to really i was always nervous to go really hard on the back just because of the check the pec injury so i was really limited to okay getting so after it let's make predictions then because mm -hmm. the next 30 days will be interesting now let's look at pros and cons cons you've gotten those initial muscle memory gains right now there's more left because you're still 30 pounds away from what the lean body mass that you've carried in the past. So you're yeah. still far away. So you still got muscle memory there. Um, uh, but that initial muscle memory is probably the most powerful. Mm -hmm. That being said, you have a lot you can do in your workouts that you haven't even touched. Yeah. You still have lots of room in your diet that you haven't yeah. gone for. Yeah. So what yeah. do you think? You think you'll match the first month? It'll slow down? <sighs> oh, I definitely won't match. I won't, especially considering I just had a week of a setback right now, too. That's another thing. Like, I mean, I had back-to-back -back weekends of traveling, and that's mm. not good for me. And kind of the rule I would tell myself when I was competing, because obviously I had situations that were, weren't ideal for dieting on a show, is that always moved me back a week. If I took three days off of travel where I'm, like, in airports, and still that in attempting to eat, better or to eat good still no working out not good sleep and and that yeah. that was like erasing a week so the way i look at myself right now is i'm a week behind already now okay so and that, i did that two weeks in a row which fucking really sucks so it, that's gonna make it more difficult i think i got the bulk of the the initial the what i would say is the easy wave of muscle memory that i that i got also the creatine yeah, initially exactly creatine. all that initial stuff so i got all that working against me now and then i also am still not at a place where i can hit my chest so mm -hmm. and and that still even limits how hard i hit my shoulders it limits how hard i hit my back yeah. Now, luckily, I really haven't been pushing the weight that much, so I still think I have a month of I can keep increasing weight before I'm really starting to push boundaries. Um, I think you'll do 10 to 13 lean body. Oh, my God, you think again? Mass. Yeah, I think 10. I least. would be ecstatic with 10. I would be ecstatic with another 10. Yeah, another 10. Just because that first month's so crazy. You know, it also is- If you uh, can do the upper body, yeah, uh, if you can get through that. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. That would be, that, if I felt good like that, I would have a different attitude because then I would know I, I have a long way to go strength-wise. Like, I'm not, I'm not pushing There's a lot of potential there, yeah. But because I'm there, I find myself like, oh, I'll have a good day of lifting and then I'm like, the next time I lift, I go, I gotta, I gotta scale back a little bit my, my chest or my shoulder or whatever. So that that's probably the biggest uh, thing that's a challenge right now is dealing with the the injury still while also trying to do this. So it's hard to say if, if I'm going to pull 
I would say eight to ten is what I'm gonna get. I mean, I would be I would be excited. The other part is this is this. I'll go with you on ten. I'm also yeah. getting to a place where the calories are getting more difficult too. So it's really easy for me, I have found. Well, so wait, which wait. by the way, there's a, this is another really good conversation to have in regards to this too, because remember when we started this, the goal was to reduce body fat. Yeah. I was at fifteen point eight percent body yeah, fat, yeah, yeah. right? So the goal would be to lean out, lose body fat. That's the main that was the main goal. Like Based off of that, you would think the first thing I do is cardio, cut calories, and stuff, no. but I was at 2,000 calories. Yeah. So imagine that. So, okay, now let's even take myself where I'm at now. Well, I'm barely hitting 3,000 to 3,200. Well, you know what I have found is that it takes about 2,800 to 3,000 calories for me to hit 200 grams of protein, like comfortably. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I could eat nothing but chicken breast and rice. Yeah, you could boil like, chicken breast. Yeah, and like, okay, I could do it that way. But if I want to have, you know, a healthy amount of fats and carbs in there yeah. and in, somewhat enjoy my meals, I've got to eat almost 3,000 calories in order to hit my 200 grams of protein. Sure. So even where I'm at now, if I were to go into a cut, Debt back down to 2,500. Now I would be sure I would lose weight, but I would also probably sacrifice muscle. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, are you lifting weights, eating a ton of food, and struggling? You're not packing on any muscle. You're not building any muscle at all. You're not getting stronger. Well, check it out. We have a hard gainer guide. This can be your ultimate resource to turn that around. Pack on some muscle mass with our hard gainer guide. It's totally free. You can get it by downloading it, clicking on the link in the description below. So something mm -hmm. else too, just to point out, you went in 30 days from eating under 2,000 calories to eating 3,000 calories mm -hmm. and lost five pounds of body fat while doing so. It works, yeah. everybody. The yeah. stuff that we talk about works. Proof Again, he cutting. has muscle memory on his side, so this is turbocharged. But the principles still remain. That's the only thing that's that's a part that like anybody that says that like you're stupid, right? I mean that's that we're not comparing the number, the final number. It's no. the point that, that that's the method. It's right? the point that it works. That's a, like yes. so because everyone's asked, well, what should I expect? Well, so, well, you're not me, so you shouldn't expect 18 pounds of muscle. Have you ever had 50 pounds of muscle on your body? You don't have, yeah. so don't expect that. But what you should expect is that you will get get the best results your body could get by approaching it that way, because right. that is the right way to approach it. It's not compare yourself to me and what I did. You know, it's, one other thing to keep in mind is that you're four weeks out. You're going to continue to reverse. You're continuing to build. Oh yeah, yeah. What you're not doing, which a lot of people might have done, is four weeks later, cool, now it's time to cut calories. Yeah. No, 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 no. There's way more potential. And when you set yourself up well with a really fast, roaring metabolism, good lean body mass, it is easy to maintain a comparison. So, Otherwise, you screw yourself. So there are different... Um, Based off the results, there are different strategies and approaches I would have had. So because I lost five pounds of fat and built 18 pounds of muscle, I went in, I'm in, well, I was supposed you to. You know you can have way more calories. That's right. Yeah. So that tells me I can bulk even more aggressive than I was because I I lost fat yeah. and built muscle. So that tells me that's a signal that, oh, okay, I can push the bulking side. Yep. Now, let's say that didn't happen. Let's pretend I put 18 pounds of muscle on and added two or three pounds of fat, which still would be great, right? If you put 18 pounds of muscle on and you only added two pounds of fat, that would be awesome. You're still but, leaner as a percentage. Yeah. Because you gain more lean body Yeah, muscle. that would be a huge success still. But what that would tell me is, okay, where I'm at calorie-wise, I don't want to push too aggressive. I either want to just stay right there and keep yeah, doing that yeah. exchange or maybe even be a little bit tighter on the yeah, calories. But the fact that you lost. But the fact that I lost fat and built that much muscle tells me I can push lost the Lost pounds of fat, not percentage. So again, everybody, if you gain muscle and gain no fat, your percentage went down of body fat because it's now a smaller percentage of your overall body weight. Okay, so one more thing I want to, I want to ask you, Adam, because one of the greatest um, – one of the greatest coaching techniques that I ever discovered, you guys communicate the same thing, and I think if you've been a trainer for a while, you figure this out, is you start to learn how to help your clients understand really the full spectrum of benefits of fitness because everybody focuses on fat loss, muscle gain, and the scale. Yeah. But there's so many other benefits that people miss because it's, that's not where they look. Selective attention is a real thing. I've said this many times on the podcast. If you just focus on the scale, that's all you notice, and you end up forget missing all these other incredible benefits – then you develop a relationship with exercise that's incomplete because it's only based on the scale and it's not a relationship that you can maintain. Okay, so I want to ask you, we know what the muscle gain, the fat loss, strength. How do you feel? How's yeah. your sleep? How's your libido? How's your energy? How's your yeah. mood? Like, what are all the other things you notice in four weeks? Yeah, I mean, this is something I, I've communicated in my videos also. It's like, uh, and I'm reminded every time, the thing that I'm always reminded of, and, I, and this is something I think almost everybody can relate to that's listening right now, is before this all started and I decided to commit to this, 
the, the biggest thing I was like telling myself, like, what the fuck am I doing right now? I've got so much going on in my personal life, at the business right now. Mm. Like, this is not the time for me to be training like like so diligently and crazy. I, I don't. Why am I putting this commitment on myself? What do I find? As soon as I start doing this and I get in the rhythm, it's like more days or more hours in the day. Happen. More energy. Yeah, I'm so much more productive. I'm getting now. I'm getting as much if not more done with the additional commitment to that and it's like as much as i know that i even find myself in the and that's telling myself the opposite yeah. before that right so that was like a big takeaway and reminder to the audience is like i get it because trust me right before this i was going like you can't commit to this adam you have yeah. too much going on right now but you do you just but you're not just committing to the workouts you're also filming it having the guys edit it because you're, you're you're putting this out there it's so a it's big wedge workouts. of time it's just that you realize like what that does to fuel you for everything else. oh yeah remember i'm not like i'm documenting every single day both inside the studio and still going home and doing live yeah, we're not asking the average person to do anything yeah you know like, the average person's gonna work out three days a week three hours is yeah. all they're asking for this is yeah. a lot more than three hours i'm committing to this project yet it, it's I'm easily being able to do it because more. It's almost like the days went to 26 hour days. What about your mood? What about your uh, your sleep? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm always I'm a I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a better brother. I'm a better business partner. Um, when I'm when I'm fit, when I'm fit and I'm healthy, I'm I'm just a better version of myself in all aspects. And sleep uh, right away, like I, that's another big one for me, especially because I drink caffeine and not using that or energy. Uh, like, boy, that makes a big difference on the way I sleep. When I first started, as soon as I started working out, like the nights, I was just like <clears throat> crashing as soon as I hit the bed. Where other nights, before, and this is and this restless. is appropriate exercise because some people think that they get they, you get better sleep because you're so exhausted from the workout. No, that's no. not what happens. No, no, I'm never. None it's of my healthy sleep. None of my workouts did I leave exhausted. Right. I mean, every one of my workouts I've left right. actually going, and I want to do more. Yeah. I, w I, sh I should do more. I want more. It's like, no, I don't need to. You know, it's cool. I just ran into somebody uh, at uh, church on Sunday who approached me. Josh, I think his name is. I hope, I hope that's your name, Josh, so, so you can hear this. He comes up to me. He's like, hey, are you, are you Sal? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh my God. He goes, your podcast helped me lose 30 pounds. And he tells me this whole story of how he essentially did everything wrong. Running, cutting his calories, hmm. following all this. And he's like, and I just couldn't get any progress. He goes, then I found your podcast. And literally, this is exact words. He goes, I realized they did the opposite of what I needed. I was doing everything so wrong, and I realized it, and I did everything that you guys said on the podcast, lost 30 pounds. The guy's super healthy. He's like, I work out less than I think I need to. I'm yeah. able to maintain it. Super. Welcome super to awesome. the other side. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's the everything part, we learned. That's the part. I mean, I, we all kind of said this when we first started doing this, that I really wanted to reach those people, right? Like there's, yeah. if you're a fitness fanatic and, and, and yeah, you know you're fine yeah you don't and, and we're not for you whatever <laughs> you're saying i'm trying to save all the people that think it has to be this daunting task mm -hmm. like it's got to be so grueling and so tough and it's like it really doesn't actually no, it's great when you do it right yeah no. it's great yeah. it's great you know speaking of sleep justin uh, how so you've had struggles with sleep recently yeah in the last few months and you just said you felt like you've been getting better sleep because well, well just as is, is a way for me to actually get deep sleep and um, I've had to intervene because it's just been a nightmare. Like, and really it's, it's something bigger I got to address. And like, I actually, um, my wife, uh, the first time I had like a serious like health issue was the only person that actually diagnosed it. And out of all the doctors and all the tests and all these things, she figured out because she was in uh, medical school at the time uh, to be a nurse, uh, figured out it was con syndrome, which was, you know, this, this tumor over my adrenal gland, which then raised my blood pressure and had all these like side effects and uh, end up getting that removed. And that kind of absolved that issue for me. However, there's ties to that she's reading now that um, actually uh, does tie in GERD, does tie in really um, heartburn, does like all these other chronic like autoimmune type issues that I've been struggling with uh, and doing all these protocols for and all these stem cell, like whatever, hasn't really done much for me. Uh, but so I actually have been every now and then I'll take like some of the Ned sleep and um, 
even over, I was testing this because I was sick. Like Thursday, Friday, I was like, I had like some flu that my son gave me. Oh, thank, thank you. That's going uh, around. Yeah, he, he he had it pretty bad. He's he's always patient zero. He always gives it to the whole family, dude. I swear. <laughs> Wait, which always kid? him. Older one of the Ethan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who he's hanging out with or what is happening, but he's always with the diseased ones. <laughs> um, and he brings that home, and then we all, you know, kind of get through it. But I usually get over it pretty quick. But, uh, I mean, I was just like, first night I took NyQuil, and I was like, you know, just, you know, just powered out, like just, and I was so dead to the world the next day. So, like, zombied out, couldn't function. And then I was just like, no, I'm just going to do the Ned sleep version. And I had weight, like I had rejuvenating kind of sleep. Like I woke up and I was like, oh, like I felt like actually energetic, you know, when I got up, but I was knocked out completely dead to the world at the same time. And, and so I just, it's such a powerful product that they don't talk about that much. Uh, it, I use it a lot when I go traveling and I'm like, I have to I like I haven't used intervene. anything as powerful as Ned sleep. Dude, that, it, it's guaranteed nighttime it's literally yeah. the the same kind of like you know just you you know like you're gonna get into that deep sleep yeah. like it's just gonna put you there uh but you're not you don't feel like a total complete worthless idiot the next day yeah which is like my sales pitch so how do you how do you you always you always do this. you get really sick and then three days later you look fine yeah i, I dude i don't know i just I, I, adam I, and i get sick and you no, can tell 30 days i later. get angry <laughs> It's kind of a rough, a rough <laughs> thing because it's like you know. I kind of wish I was a little more of a baby about it. Like, it, wait, wait, hold on. Are you calling us babies? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just love not. I'm not babies, bro. <laughs> you guys take it how you want, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, I wish shoot, I was like a little fits. more. Like, had people like doting on me or whatever. I'm just like, get away from me. Ugh. You know, I can power. Like, I'm trying to like power through it and like, ugh, like <laughs> will my way out of it, you know? And it, it just never, people hate to be around me. You'd be the it's worst like, patient. How you do anything is how you do everything, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's just the that's demo. Silly. That is your MO, bro. So I just, uh like just try to will my way out of it. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it makes it worse. Yeah. So yeah, I, I got over it. Like Saturday, well, I was starting to feel better. I plan on, you know, having you guys in my life for the rest of our lives. So hopefully you never need us to care for you because that'll be just pure comedy <laughs> yeah you, you and courtney are going to be angry uh, like she's she angrily like just force feeds me like pills and you know, you know that <laughs> we know the whole thing that we went through with katrina right that yeah. that that scariness yeah. that we had right that was probably part of why like one of the things we've talked about is that um man how much it drew us closer together i'm convinced it's because in the back of her head probably Forever up until that point, she always wondered, like, I wonder if shit got really bad. If this fucker could probably take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> if he could really take care of us. I really oh, believe. Man. I believe that the reason why we got yeah. bought it is simply, I think, in the back of her head. Me. Yeah, I think in the back of her head, she always thought, like, man, if I'm on my deathbed, I'm, we're fucked. This guy's oh not going to take care of me. But Hopefully I, that I, like I, I rose, made you tighter, I rose, right? Yeah, yeah. I rose the occasion. She yeah. was so impressed with everything I was able to handle for us, and like. So I really think that was where the where the the super bond came from. Is I think in the back of her head, she's just like, "This guy can't help me." Oh, <laughs> well, when you're funny, that dude. vulnerable, especially if you're that kind of a person, because Katrina's like that, where she just you know, like, "I'll do it, I'll handle it," right? Yeah. When you're that kind of a person and you're forced to be vulnerable, because she was forced, she had no yeah. choice. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's like it's it's nice to see to be able to trust somebody, see this your person that you're you know somebody's caring for you and it's genuine, because it's such a fear. That's by the way, you know, because uh, I'm the same way. The reason why some people are hard to care for is it's a fear. We don't want to be burdened. We don't want to be burdens on anybody. Yeah. Oh, she's definitely really mm -hmm. struggled with it. It's still, I mean, still to this yeah. day, it still is tough for her when she has these momentary setbacks and she's just not used to saying, I need help. Yeah. Or I can't, or those things like that. Mm -hmm. It's just, just really, really been, it's been interesting to watch her go through that. And know that that's been like the, the the greatest challenge for her is to be able to kind of let go and and ask for help and be patient, and do those things like that. So yeah, I'm the guy that'll like you know if this was like ten thousand years ago, I'd just go off the cave and dive. dive yeah. You know what I mean? I don't feel good, guys. I'll <laughs> yeah. see you guys later. You come find me ten years later. That's yeah. where he was. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm gonna change change topics here. I just learned about a new course that some universities are offering. That um, I guess it's a sign of the times, but it's a little. Uh, Kind of cringy. Did they tell you how to uh, bring your parents to the interviews with you? No. Okay. God, that's that probably is <laughs> that's a still. I told Courtney that the other day. She didn't believe me. <sighs> that people that, that kids stat, are doing that, that stat. That's, yeah, yeah, sixty percent or whatever it was. It was I mean, it's hard. It is hard to believe. Right? Oh, like that. Like All right. So some universities are offering influencer courses. What? Oh, okay. Brilliant. Right. Brilliant. How to be? All right, we're brilliant. done. How to <laughs> be? Humanity's over. Yeah. How to be an influencer? <laughs> how to get followers? How to build a 
business or brand. You know, okay, so you know what? Okay, I, like, okay, I actually, I love this conversation that you brought this up. I knew up. you would like it. Yeah, I do like this conversation. But yeah, this actually came up. So I was with my Hampton group this week. Okay. So I went, I I, I flew up to Jackson Hole. By the way, epic place. Isn't it gorgeous? Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I got to go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Be- I mean, for me, probably the most beautiful countryside I, I've been to yet. But, yeah. And incredible food and stuff like that too. So just- and the people. Yeah. People are Oh, nice. yeah. People are made Just beautiful. Yeah. All, the way, all the way around. Anyways, this conversation kind of came up. We were talking about, the, you know, influencer stuff. And I, I always talk about how, and you guys know this, like we are, we're all like this. Like it's like a total insult. Oh God, don't and, say that. And, and I was- Someone and says they, you're an influencer. They, and, and so it came up, right? And so of course they were like <laughs> laughing and they were asking me and I said, well, it's because- um, I want I want to build a business and a brand that provides such a high value service or product that it has nothing to do with my influence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Like I'm yeah. I'm not trying to be so popular or famous I could peddle shit to you the re- for as long as I'm an influencer. I want to build a brand and a product so valuable that other people use it and yeah. tell other people. Yeah. That's going to withstand I'm, the test of time. Like it's yes, it's gonna be tried and true. It's not yeah, dependent on you showing up with motivation or yes. not. Yes, one hundred and that and so. And I get that we're in this period of time where this has become a class and an actual position. Well, you know most kids, when you ask them, have you seen these studies? Yeah, they when want they to be- kids, Elementary and junior high kids? They want to be influencer or YouTuber. Th- YouTuber. YouTuber. Yeah, YouTuber, YouTuber influencer. influencer. And, uh, you know, I, I want to, to tell this generation coming up, boy, it's a- The my, the influencer friends that I have and that I know, a lot of them are miserable uh, yeah. because you don't realize what you're signing up for in order to make a living that way where you constantly have to influence people to buy things in order for you to make a living. It's a tough place to be. You'd be far better off trying to create a product or a brand or a service that is provided to people that helps them and change their right. life. That right there, not only is it rewarding, but it also allows you to scale out of it. When you're an influencer yourself, you got to do that work. If if you're, if the whole point of what you're doing is just to make money, you're going to be very, very disappointed because the, the way to be a successful influencer, and I don't mean money-wise, I mean just this is what you enjoy doing, is whatever you're communicating is something that you feel a strong purpose and meaning behind. Mm-hmm. And a lot of influencers don't. They just don't. For them, it's about being popular and then selling products as a popularity. And that's why they're so freaking miserable. Yes. And and both fame and money are not shortcuts to happiness. And the data on this is clear. This isn't just me communicating. You can see what the data says that as soon as your, your needs are met with money, more money doesn't make you happier. And fame, actually, there's a negative relationship with fame and notoriety and happiness so it's it's that's why i feel like these these courses and this message around being an influencer is setting up this generation to to, for a miserable future because it is most everybody i know that went this route and even the ones that have had lots of success doing it are miserable because like exactly what you said is they put first of all it's already hard to become popular or famous on the internet right no matter what no matter what they tell you or what course they try to sell you that it's easy it takes a unique person to get that kind of garner yeah. that kind of attention which that's hard in itself so then you figure that out and now you're like okay i've arrived i'm an influencer now let me take on the brands and and start to influence me. now you are subject to who's willing to work with you in order for you to peddle their shit and then you're dependent on the that going well for you to be financially you know successful and so all of this energy and effort goes into keeping those those brands happy and those customers buying just so you can get paid meanwhile you and probably are selling your soul whole yeah, time. yeah yeah uh, i mean just rarely ever i mean it's here you know here, there's another there's another side to this why i think these cl- these courses are going to be dumb uh, is that okay so what are they going to do they're going to show algorithms they're going to show how social media works and you're going to do what, a, a, a two or four year or three year process of learning this at a university. I, I hate to break this to you, but by the time you start learning something, yeah, 12 months later, archaic. 12 months later, it's not the same algorithm. Everything's so different. This stuff changes every three months. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't understand that. how that's going to work. I'd love to see it. Well, maybe they have solid principles around it. Well, that's called business classes, though. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, my yeah, whole point. Right. You don't need an influencer yeah. course. That's true. You that's just fair. need to learn business. That's fair. Those principles Those are the only solid principles. That's it. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. like, what are they going to teach? Yeah. That's my point. What's different about this? I know. I'd love to see the 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 uh, the you know the syllabus or whatever, right? I'd love to see what the what they lay out for somebody like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So many so many of these courses and classes are like all the algorithm gimmicky hack yeah. stuff, and it's like you know, 
when you go that route, even if you do hit it, you maybe you hit it just right at the right time and you have a, a good run. But eventually, you, if you don't have a good product or service that is helping or changing lives that other people are going to share with other people because they've had so much success with it, really, really tough to keep that model going for and a really also, long time. And also, I want people to understand, if it is, if your goal is to build a business, you don't need <coughs> thousands or no, millions of no, followers. No, no, no. Just like owning a storefront, you know, if you have hundreds of people that really find tons of value in what you're providing, you have yourself a very successful business. And well, the way to do that you, is to provide real value. You know, it's funny you say that too, Sal, because we right now, obviously in the last couple of months, uh, you know, we've, we have reinserted ourselves back in our trainer program, right? We That's right. initially had hired somebody else, hopefully that they were going to be the CEO and run it. They, they failed miserably. Now we're back in there and we're doing it. And one of the things that we're getting as feedback is the messaging that we have around scaling and being a trainer is so different to what all these other online courses and stuff are teaching people because everybody else is in the business of, hey, pay me X amount of dollars for my course. I'll show you a quick way to make that five or 10 grand back so that you feel like you didn't lose any money on me. But it's not teaching you principles around- You're having gonna a, build a career like Yeah, that. building a business. It's just like, oh, this is how you can use Instagram to hack into some sort of a, a challenge or thing that you can do to make that five grand that you spent mm -hmm. on my course on teaching you how to do that, which is not, we're not in the business of that at all. It's like, listen, this is gonna take you a long time. You should probably be chasing mastery and getting better at your craft. That should be your number one focus. And then getting people in front of you because that's what's going to make you a good coach I want to teach coaches and it's trainers. Like cashing coaches. out their investments. Yeah. Like, oh, cash out yeah. your investment. Get yeah. the money. Reinvest. No, I want to teach trainers and coaches hustle. how to do this as a career. Like, if you love doing this, which you should. If you want to be a trainer or coach, you should love doing this, number one. Yeah. If that's you, I would love to teach you how to do this until you retire. To be able to support yourself and your family, doing what you love, making a good living, actually getting people healthy and fit in a real way. We're going to. It's, it's it. our, our play is the slower play, but check back with me in six months to a year and the trainers that are in our course that we are coaching and mentoring and teaching, They'll we're going to kick the ones. shit out of everybody else. Hey, that we have a way. So, okay, we're, we're doing, and by the way, just, we're, this is- uh, Free. We're, we're putting, yes, we're, we're putting the rubber of the road. So we're doing free classes for anybody who wants to attend. You don't have to pay for this. Uh, stuff that we used to teach trainers and coaches when we manage gyms. Every other month. Uh, so every other month, Adam and I get on and teach you what we think to be the most valuable. You don't buy nothing. You just learn. Show up. And just show up. And now hopefully you get so much value that you end up, you know, becoming, you know, one of our coaches and trainers at some point, but you don't have to. We're going to teach you a lot of free stuff. Uh, the next one we have is November, is 12th. It November 12th, 4 p.m. Pacific, trainerwebinar.com. You can sign up. It's unlimited. Sign up and check it out. Yeah. It's, it's totally, totally free. Speaking of partners and people we work with zbiotics uh now wants to be referred to as and i love that i think this is brilliant they want to be called a pre-alcohol probiotic drink pre-alcohol pre-alcohol uh, hmm, i'm mad that i didn't come up with that yeah it's smart yeah. that is way smart it like pre-workout pre-alcohol that's brilliant i Absolutely love it brilliant. I lo i'm so matthew i drank on this trip too and i didn't have mine with oh. me. so that's like <laughs> I mean, I thought, you know, it's like, well, I thought I checked all the boxes of things I want. I didn't think, I wasn't thinking about alcohol, but I, I drank almost. But by the way, too, that's another reason why this is going to be challenging for me. Like, I actually allowed myself to drink, too. So pretty much every night. Alcohol is a muscle killer. Yeah, it just is. And you know what, it, what? I was like going back through like my food log and seeing like why it's so detrimental. Is it just because it, it fills you up with empty, worthless calories? Mm -hmm. It's like I, I end up drinking, and you know, then I also miss protein. Yeah, it's I skip like, meals oh. when I'm drinking. Yeah, that. like yeah, when we were You're in full. Alabama, I actually introduced some of my friends to uh, Zbiotics, and it was they're tripping out on it. But yeah, it was we were, we end up like drinking throughout the day, and then we'd skip lunch, and then we kind of you know, and you, you just kind of drag it on. You eat these little meals, but like you don't really get any nutrients or sustenance. Was this their first time using it? Yeah. So why were they, they were just tripping because they felt Oh, so tripping the next day. They were like, normally based off of like, because <laughs> I hate to like reveal like, but That's we fine. we've polished a good like bottle of whiskey, you know, and, uh, and we we should have been like pretty slow going, you know, moving the next day, and we we're just yeah, a bunch all of like, mid forties guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus that on top of like yeah. smashing into people and whatnot, you know, yeah. like we should have been pretty messed up. But yeah, we we're pretty. They're 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 tripping. They're like, this is this is real. This is legit. Yeah. So. People who don't know, so you, you drink this before you drink alcohol, and then it it it, it the it's probiotic magical. Magical. they break down the acetaldehyde in your gut, which is what oftentimes make you feel like garbage. And it's a 
This is genetically modified bacteria, so you don't find this uh, anywhere else. And it does work like, like if like if if a ten is how I typically feel after drinking alcohol in terms of like not feeling good, it brings it down to a no joke a three. So yeah. I can still tell I drank, but it's like a three, which is which, oh, is, yeah. which is wild. About the only thing it doesn't like what I it doesn't give me good sleep. Right, like, cause, like, you still drink. Yeah, yeah. If, I get, yeah. if I have six drinks, Alcohol's and I go to bed. Sleep my night's sleep with. is not going to be good. But I don't have the hungover feeling. Is what it gets rid of. Yeah. That's the part which is yeah. obviously just as miserable. So it's like, okay, I didn't have the best night yeah, of sleep, no, but at least I don't no feel headache, miserable. none of the stomach yeah. issues. All Do you that. guys, I hate the when you drink and you go to bed and you get the sweats. I hate uh, that. You yeah. wake up in the yeah. night and you're just like sweats oh. and you just constantly just kind of get up because yeah i'm like hot and like energized oh in a weird feels, way feels like absolute garbage mm. do you have a shout out oh i just was gonna shout out a book i've been reading with my wife trying to understand our 13 year old son 14 year old son yeah and uh so it's called the emotional lives of teenagers uh i think it's lisa demore uh really good though it just kind of helps us to kind of get a grasp of like some of these outbursts and like where they're coming from and uh, how to selectively say things to um, kind of weather it out and, and deal with it. So it's God, good. God bless you. If you're interested in hormone replacement therapy, men and ladies, if you are over the age of 35, especially over the age of 40, hormone replacement therapy can be a total game changer. Or maybe you're just interested in the world of peptides. GLP-1s are peptides. There are peptides that boost growth hormones, those that speed up healing, peptides for sleep. If you're interested in any of that, you want longevity experts, doctors, you want to work with them, find out if it's right for you. Go to mphormones.com. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Alyssa from North Carolina. Alyssa, what's happening? Hey, hi guys. How are you? Oh, great. Hey, How are you? What's happening? Good. It's nice to meet you. You too. Same. Uh, I just want to start off with a confession. I've been a listener for like seven years now. And just in the past year, I finally took you guys' advice and I stopped boot camp classes and I started strength training. <laughs> Only took six and I'm years. I'm loving it. <laughs> and, and you love it, huh? <laughs> I do. Yeah. So the point of me saying this is like to anybody listening, start earlier. Like I really wish I would have. Um, I could do one pull up now, which is huge for me. <laughs> I That's just awesome. got it the other day. <laughs> That's awesome. And I don't even listen to music anymore. So thank you guys. Oh, you got it. Right on. Yeah. Um, do you want me to just go into my question? Yeah, yes, let's please. hear it. Okay. I'm going to read off here so I don't get sidetracked. But my question is in regards to my job. I'm a registered nurse currently in a health coaching role. The company mm -hmm. I work offer. The company I work for offers wellness programs and health coaching to other companies in order to hopefully reduce healthcare costs. The clients agree to the wellness program, and if they're compliant, they get a discount on their health insurance. Um, so the way it works, they take a yearly health assessment where we get like their blood pressure, labs, weight, and all that, and they get a risk score. So the higher the score, the more often they meet with me. Um, so my issue is that some clients aren't really interested in learning about health and fitness. They just meet with me to get like the uh, discount off their insurance. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it's frustrating to see these people so unhealthy and not interested in making any changes. Um, I've known them for about a year or two now. So like in that time, I've just been trying to like develop rapport and get to know them and kind of tie the conversation into health and fitness. Um I have 20 minute appointments with each person at most once a month. Um, do you have any advice for me? Like how do you coach somebody who doesn't really want to be coached? I love that. You know, what's funny, Alyssa, about this question that you just asked me. Yeah. You opened by saying that you've listened to us for seven years, but it took you six years <laughs> to start. <strength> training. <laughs> uh, you literally, uh, literally. Got it. Yeah. So oh, got me. Yeah. You're no, it's perfect. You're this, coaching yourself this, right now. Absolutely. <laughs> this is absolutely perfect. So let me ask you what worked. Wh how did we finally get you to make the decision to stop the crappy boot camp and start strength training? What was it that we did that finally brought you over? Yeah, I think I just finally was like not seeing any changes and like, okay, I'm like running myself to the ground here. I got to try something different and I'm fine. And I was, well, okay. And also I was nervous. I was, it was a little intimidating to start, you know, just strength, tra just trying something new, I guess. Yes, I totally understand that. But there's more to this, Alyssa, because during that whole period of time, you, you kept listening to us, right? Yeah, yeah. Had you stopped listening to us, we might, we may never have gotten here. 
Yeah, that's true. So what was it that kept you coming back? I just finally kept hearing everybody saying so many good things and just kept listening. I don't know. I just you enjoyed. To- I'll give you the answer. You enjoyed listening. Give me to the us. answer. Yeah. You enjoyed listening to us. You enjoyed being in our company, and yeah. eventually the message came through. Yeah. So that's the answer. Yeah. The answer is continue to be this great person. Continue to be this understanding, empathetic person, and eventually uh, the opportunities yeah. will arise. And it It'll may take around. a while, but that's the only way to do it. You can't force it. <clears throat> These opportunities will present themselves, but what you want to be is you want to be this person that your patients, your clients want to continue to come and see, because that's the only way you're ever going to have any influence with them is if they actually want to come and see you. Gotcha. There's also, there's also, you probably hear us talk about this too, is meeting the client where they're at. And that may look way different for all the different, especially in, in, in your field and the type of clients that you're getting. It could be as simple as like just convincing this person Hey, let's let's just see what happens if we try and build a sleep routine. What if we just try to do a couple things to improve your sleep? I'm not going to tell you to go to the gym yet. I'm not going to tell you to start weighing your like, you know, learning that some people they're just they don't want to do the gym thing. They're not willing at this point in their life. They're not willing to commit to all these things. But maybe could be able to commit to making a better choice about something that's related to health that you know can impact them a lot, like their sleep um, or walking or things like that. And so. Uh, for sure, the advice that Sal said, that's just it. You just got to be be you, be likable, be somebody they want to listen to and, and show up to meet. Eventually, you break through uh, you know, to the, those people, but also finding like how to communicate to these people where they're currently at. Like if you have somebody who is just no way right now or anytime soon, you're going to convince them to go to the gym three times a week and lift weights. But you know what? They they wouldn't mind trying some things to improve their sleep at night. Like, okay, I'm open to that. Tell me what I. So also thinking about that too. Like, okay, where can I? What what other things I can do? Because being healthier, there's a lot of there's a lot more things that it in, encompasses besides just eating better and strength training. There's a lot of things this, these people can do to decompress and and lower stress and improve sleep and improve mobility and walking. And so trying things like that too, is kind of trying to meet them where they're currently at. Yeah. And you know, some other strategies too, Alyssa, once like if these people are seeing you and you start to build rapport and they start to like you, you could just share your own stories and don't make it so obvious. Like you're trying to push them to do something, but literally be like, Oh my God, that's such a great, how was your day yesterday? And they'll tell you like, Oh, how was yours? Oh man, yesterday I had this great workout. You know, I used to do these crazy workouts and I switched to something else and I'm feeling so much better. And that's it. That's it. Like step yeah. one is that they, they still got to, they come and see you. And as long as they come and see you, the opportunity is always there. But if you push too hard or if you get down on yourself, I'm not making something happen. I got to push harder. You'll yeah. lose that. You'll lose that person. And then you'll never have those opportunities. So you're actually doing what you said in your question was to build rapport. That's the most important thing. Yeah. That's the most okay. important thing. Yeah. So just be patient. Yeah. I'm not very patient. So maybe this is another, you know, I'm like, okay, I've known you for a while, but that is also good advice. Like say it kind of like not straightforward, like it's kind of like what you do with the kids, you know, like, totally. oh yeah. man, like this happened. And hundred yeah, percent. It, it humanizes you, right? It humanizes you yeah. to them and being able to say things like, man, I, I was working out wrong the, for the longest time because I thought I had to do all this stuff. It's crazy now. I do a couple exercises and I can't believe the results and benefits I get. You know, so te- dropping those seeds like that to them. Uh, by uh, th- this is a, a trainer hack for sure. Like part of, and, and a lot of trainers uh, fail at this is because most of us have these massive egos and are insecure. So being comfortable with humanizing or talking about your struggles is hard for a lot. But that makes a great coach and trainer is somebody who's willing to say like, man, I mm-hmm. oh, I was fucking up for a long time. I thought I had to do this. I had, even, even with my schooling and all the all the knowledge I have in this field, I still didn't know what I was doing. I, you tell that to a person who's looking to you for advice and they go like, oh shit, okay, so she's not perfect either. And oh, she right. she struggled with this too. That's like, the vulnerability that's really good. Yeah, being vulnerable is huge for those people. Yeah, so. Absolutely. You're doing good though. Yeah. Do, do they do do you think they like you? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think they do too. You seem very not likeable. to be like not to be confident, yeah. but yeah, I think they do. Yeah, that's man. That you is come off very like. Yeah, sure. I mean, I like you. I think that's a great you. like yeah. you are. Uh, that's a, that's the most important step, and you just stay patient, stay consistent, have them show up, have build that rapport, and then those opportunities they will present themselves and it may take a while for some people and you just got to be okay with that. I mean, there were clients I trained literally I had clients that hired me to lose weight 
and didn't lose weight for three years. Yeah. Like three years. They worked on me for three years, and yeah. then they finally- But they, they enjoyed showing up. But they time. enjoyed showing yeah. up. They loved seeing me, and at least they showed up. At least we did some exercise. Yeah. And then, of course, three years later, something clicked, and then they're like, you know what? I'm Just ready to do this. allow that space for it to happen. That's it. And the, then it happened. The funny part, too, it'll be weird stuff like this, too, where you say something a different way, and it clicks with them, and you're like, I've been saying that to you <laughs> yeah. for fucking yeah. two yeah. years. Yeah. That is what got you yeah. to do it. You know, or they so, hear it from their neighbor, you just and you're never, like, I've been saying that for two years. You never know. You never know what it's going to be. I mean, literally, that's the formula of this podcast, right? I mean, it's like we, we say the same message a hundred different ways, and you know, there's a there's a whole cohort of people that that time, the seventh time we said it that way, right. all of a sudden it clicked for them, and now they're they're bought in. You know, so that's right. just got to be you, like me. Yeah, that's funny. That yeah. is a great example. Yes, yeah. you got it. You got <laughs> it. Yeah. Doing well, good. that was my only question. That's yeah. awesome, Alyssa. Let me send something to you. Do you have any of our programs? You want any? Um. So I had I bought performance. And I, because I'm, I stay at home with my kids full time, and this is my part time thing. So it seems like an extreme sport, you know, like putting them in car seats all day. I figured that was a good program, but I, I bought it right when Muscle Mommy came out, so I switched and got that instead. So I'm in the middle of that. Awesome. Um, so I don't. Uh, you know what might be yeah. a good? I'll give you a, a program that would be good because I'm assuming you're you you probably work with and deal with a lot of deconditioned type people. Prime Pro is a great program and it's a great place to meet a lot of people. I like maybe I can't get you to lift weights yet, but I can get you to do some mobility stuff to help that knee pain or to help that hip pain. So I'd love yeah, to send you Prime Pro. Oh, what a great yes. entry. What a great entry. I'm sure you ask them about pain and people will say, Oh yeah, my shoulder. Oh hurts. Yeah, yeah, no, they tell me about it all the time. Oh, like back pain. Man. I need to send that the one that you just did, the podcast you guys just did on back pain to a lot of the guys. Oh, yeah. perfect. Uh, Prime Pro. Now you have yeah. some tools that you can Awesome. Help them with. Thank yes. you guys so much. Right, you got Lisa. it. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 How how funny is that? Seven. She years. Literally, she literally <laughs> opened is like she gave you all the information yeah. you needed right yeah, there. Yeah, like, yeah. I've been listening to you guys so for seven great. years. Finally made yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't get these other people to listen yeah. to me. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> that's weird. You know, it's um the reason why you know when we open the show, I intro and I say we're the the top uh, fitness and entertainment podcast. I say entertainment. The reason why there's an entertainment component, yeah, it's is because as trainers, this is intentional. When we were trainers. You figured this out. If you're all fitness, you're not going to be very successful. People have to enjoy showing up and being with you and hanging out with you. And then doors open. And then you can start to influence people. And then you can really start to help people. And the patience is extremely, extremely important. You can't push someone to do something they don't want to do. You have to pull them in. And that sometimes takes a long time. Yep. Our next caller is Nikos from Greece. Nikos, what's happening? Hello, what's happening? guys. Hello, my bum. Hello, Yasas. How are you? Good, good. How can we help you? you? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'm. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Nikos. I'm 28 years old. I'm from Greece, just like Dad said. And I really appreciate you guys all your hard work and for the helpful free content you give. And I really appreciate the opportunity you give me to come here and talk with you guys. Thank you for taking my call. You got awesome. Right on. So uh, I've been lifting for a year and a half now, and I am pumping my mind for a year. Let's see what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clever. So uh, yeah, I, I wanna I wanna make a pause here and make a more personal thank you note, side note. So uh, you, when you guys got into my life. Like I just stumbled upon you on YouTube and like my whole life changed. I became the healthier, healthiest version of me possible ever. And I just, you just saved my life. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you. So uh, I have my question written down for you. Uh, it was in regards with the uh, episode you guys made. It was 23.55, in which, Adam, you were not there. So I hope everything is all right. I wish you all the best. So let me read it for you. That was a popular episode. You, you gave an example that if, oh, let's yeah. say, you do five exercises for your workout, your intensity increases should be on one to two of them. But there comes a question in my mind as my program must be more like a MAPS 15 type of workout due to summer stress and time limitations. My workout till now was four days a week, Monday upper for five exercises, 
Tuesday lower four exercises, Thursday upper five exercises, and Friday it was lower full body two and two exercises. And at the time next week, it would look like six days a week, two or three exercises per workout. So how do I modify the intensity while at the same time I reduce the volume to more than half? Uh, I mean, we wrote a program that's good, that, that does it all for you. Do you have MAPS 15? Mm, uh, no, I don't have MAPS 15, although I did because the, the question was in June, so it was about summer. So I did what I, what my, let's say, mind, yeah, yeah, understanding of the MAPS 15 program kind of looked like. And in regards with the intensity, I, I changed the rest time. I reduced the rest time. I also slowed the tempo. I focused more on a technique, on squeezing, let's say, and when you're doing biceps, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most of it was compound, big compound lifts. And then August, I added some supersets for more for chest. And that's about what I did. That's that's fine. You can do yeah. that. We don't have to. We got we got you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, literally just follow or we'll send you MAPS 15, do the advanced version. It's all laid out yeah. for you. Yeah, it's it all laid out for you. It, yeah, yeah. There's, there, you don't, you yeah. just follow the program as it's laid out. As far as intensity is concerned, regardless of your experience, uh, even if you're advanced, it, intensity right. increasing techniques don't really need to be applied very often at all. Like you know, like like once every four weeks, five weeks, something like that at most. For the most part, straight sets are what are going to mm -hmm. get you the best results consistently. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, so what cool. I did was I did for the whole summer. So probably it's why I'm feeling now the way I'm feeling. Like tired, lazy, like everything yeah. in regards with overtraining. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah, you probably overdid it. Yeah. And yeah. So now I'm just really trying to uh, get back on my feet. Mm -hmm. That's why. Do you so I switched to uh, three times a week. Oh, full body and yeah that's about it nikos do you, do you still want to yeah. work out two exercises a day six days a week or do you prefer three three days a week because i can send you a program now, that'll do now, either. now i will have to switch for three days a week because also i'm going to move out I, i'm starting uh i'm starting career shift on personal training i got inspired by you guys so, yeah, very nice. Actually, this week is my first, my first lesson this Saturday. Oh, exciting! Yeah, yeah. good for you. Maps anabolic. Yeah, we yeah. should send you. Anabolic. We'll send you maps anabolic. And then, are you aware that every other month, Sal and I do free webinars for coaches and trainers to help you with your business? I, uh, I subscribed. Uh, I did, but I never, I never got into one because of the summer. Uh, because of the summer, actually, the summer is pretty tough here. Uh, also, in my line of previous work, I do water sports, so it's only summer. And no time for almost nothing. That's why I also switched to kind of like MAPS 15. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, um, yeah. we ha we do them every other month. So the next one we're going to be doing is, uh, I think, November, if I'm not mistaken. But if you go All to right. Facebook, you could you can be in our Facebook uh, personal training group, group. Yeah. and I believe what's it called? Personal okay. trainer growth, growth secrets, secrets powered by mind pump. Yeah. Go in there. It's a free group. And then you'll get notifications for our webinars, but maps anabolic. Okay. We'll send you that program. Follow that three days a week. It's perfect for what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much guys. All right, I also, I also want to say that one day I really hope I will be able to come there and talk with you in person or be maybe be a guest at your your show so that would be awesome yeah, yeah. we'd love that man yeah, yeah. actually yeah, i'd prefer to come i'd prefer okay. to come to you yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true yeah a big uh, yeah. beautiful place <laughs> like but now i'm quitting my job so it wouldn't be 
We'll get yeah. we'll get in get in the personal trainer forum. We're in there a lot. That's where we engage, and it's a big focus of the business right now to be focusing on coaches and trainers like yourself and helping you with your business. Okay. So get over there. I better um, see I better see you in that forum. All right. All right. All right, Nikos. Thank you, Nikos. See you in there, buddy. Thank you. All Thank right, you buddy. very much, guys. Bye. -bye. Wish all right. you all the best. Yeah, I think the good thing for uh, for people to understand when they hear that is that workout programming um, isn't. It's, it's, it isn't as easy as people think. Now, there is simplicity to it, but oftentimes when people try to create a program, uh, they'll, they'll misplace a variable, whether it be intensity or volume or even exercises in whatever order, and then it'll work for a second, and then they'll be like, what, what's going on? Why do I feel the way I do? Like These are all considerations yeah. that really experienced coaches have to consider uh, when they create a workout program for someone. So so all, there are some real simple basic workouts in there, but don't get misled by the simplicity. Like MAPS Anabolic yeah. looks very simple on its face, but there's there's a lot of complexity in the simplicity of it. And if you start to apply, you know, add variables that you think need to, you know, need to be in there, unless you're very experienced, uh, like you've trained lots of people, and you've been a coach right. for a while, Typically doesn't work out. I think that's the difficulty of, you know, explaining it because um, some people can change a few variables and things and see like real yeah. results right away, but the, it's a brief window. And so that's right. knowing like how to extend that out and then, you know, plan even further to bypass a lot of these plateaus, uh, that's all, you know, related to really good programming. I think a lot of that is uh, the faults of uh, all of us coaches and trainers online that are always you know, competing with the latest, greatest yeah. study or this gets this. And it's these studies that are done in these six to eight week windows yep. to show strength gains or this. And then people take that and then they start to add it into a program. Without that's changing anything. Yeah. But that's already laid out like perfect to see, you know, growth and change. And they throw it on top because, oh, they heard this. And then to Justin's point, they see a little bit of, of results in the first week or two because it is a new stimulus for them. And then it ends up being too much and their body adapts and then they regress and go the other way. And it's just like there's I, I do think that we we overcomplicate. This is something I just was communicating yeah. to uh, yesterday talking about just this is just literally like yep. it's 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 not that difficult. I think we tend to, to overcomplicate and hurt ourselves by trying to add all these things uh, from all of our favorite fitness influencers that are giving these tips on how to build more muscle and then you don't take that into account uh that if you add something like that and that something else needs to probably get pulled out or changed or modified otherwise you'll end up hitting a brick wall hey sorry to interrupt it's october maps muscle mommy is 50 percent off half off if you're interested click on the link below all right back to the show our next caller is brian from connecticut What's going on, Brian? What's up, Brian? Hey, guys. How you doing? I can't believe I'm on. <laughs> you guys are great. I want the, all the content and having a section dedicated to helping listeners is really awesome. So thank, um, you. thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, man. Uh, I guess my question is, I read in Sal's bio that he had a setback in his 20s and he lost 15 pounds of muscle, thought it was an autoimmune, and he yeah. spent a year to recover. And... His story is is similar to what I'm going through right now. Um, I'll keep it short. I was in, I felt great. I was in great shape, and then six years ago, I just all of a sudden hit a wall. I stopped recovering, and then my strength of muscle has just been, has just been withering away and just like melting. Um, I try to go see medical help. I've seen like every ologist in the world. I've gone to the Mayo Clinic. I've gone to see Eastern medicine, and like nothing's. <clears throat> Nothing's helped. Um, I've tried to basically <laughs> maximize diet, exercise, and sleep, and then it's nothing's working. So um, I was hoping to ask you um, if you could share anything on what you learned, what you did to get back to to where you are now. Um, so yeah, um, any help that you guys would give would be great. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's rough, man. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming you had your hormones tested just to get the basics out. Yeah, they did. I guess, uh, do you mean by like testosterone levels too? Yeah, testosterone. and, and Yeah, and everything came back normal, quote unquote <clears throat> normal. I mean, after going to the Mayo Clinic, I mean, they basically told me I have high cholesterol, which is great, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't really solve yeah. my problems with where I'm at right now. So, okay. um, And then lifestyle. Um, are, are you under a lot of stress, too much stress, or could, would you, would you be able to label it as such? 
Uh, yeah, that's probably the first question everyone asks. Um, so it's, yes, um, six years ago, my parents got into a huge car accident and I've been taking care of them ever since. Okay. Um, I didn't bring that up initially because yes, stress, stress doesn't make, stress doesn't make things easier, but all, I mean, I've just been losing, like, I can't <clears throat> train anymore and everything's a mess. And yes, I don't want to discount it, but at the same time, like, I, I, it's, I think I know myself well enough that it's not, that's not the real reason of why I'm at where I am. So okay. yeah. now don't underestimate the, the impact of stress and how yeah. it, it really can, and it's cumulative. So, you know, you may be able to handle it for a while, but then it starts to kind of build up and that may not be the root. It may just be fuel for whatever the root is. Um, now when, when, when my issue was gut related, so I had gut health issues and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And back in those days, it was really hard to find a functional medicine practitioner. And I was lucky that I had a young lady that worked in my studio who was on that path. And so we took a functional medicine approach <clears throat> to some of my issues. We did some gut testing. I did the hormone testing. And I found that I had, um, you know, at the time they called it leaky gut syndrome. Today they label it something different. I saw all the food intolerances I had. And I really did have to completely modify my diet and my training. I reduced my training intensity, my volume, placed the focus on sleep, and my diet was radically uh, changed. And it took a year of slow recovery before I started to kind of feel um, like I was back to normal. Have you worked with a functional medicine practitioner or someone holistic in that sense? Yeah, actually, I did all the... I did all the initial research with a guy that you guys had in the podcast, uh, Cabral? Dr. Stephen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I researched some other people. Um, I guess that would be one option. I'm just, I'm kind of tired of seeing like every single doctor, but I, 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 I'm certainly open to any, any suggestions. So I, I guess maybe that's one option. Um, <clears throat> typically they're the, they're the last line, uh, or the last person okay. that people will see because you go to your your traditional doctors and you've probably been to a neurologist, you've been to your hormone yeah. specialist, you've been to your, of course, your general practitioner, you've probably been to a gastro specialist. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm laughing because these are literally all the things that I know. Yeah. I figured when you said you've been to all the ologists, I figured you've been, you've gone down the traditional route and a functional medicine practitioner takes a, a big picture look. And then they start to they start to work with the most common offenders and, and go from there. But they often test for things that other doctors don't necessarily look at. And this is where things start to oftentimes make sense, although there often is a long discovery process. So you may work with a functional medicine practitioner. And it may take a few months of testing and work before you start to identify uh, things that help or work. But they're the most holistic when it comes to these things, and anytime I worked with a client who couldn't figure out the the cause uh, or, or the root cause of their issues, uh, that would be the direction that I would often send them. And uh, I mean, in in as long as I've been working with people, they've almost always been successful. It's not always easy though. I mean, I had clients that worked with functional medicine practitioners for a year or longer before they really started to see um, progress. But that's one hundred percent. The direction that I would uh, I would point you because you've already you've already ruled out all of the potential acute like you know emergency type stuff life or death right that, that's right so now what we're left with is for some reason the systems of your body don't seem to be working well you feel like garbage you're fatigued you've you've done all the major stuff you've probably tested for nutrient deficiencies you've looked at hormones you've looked at your nervous system you 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 haven't been able to label any uh, known autoimmune condition. So I'm sure they've tested you for all the, the major ones. Uh, so that would be the next step would be to go to a good functional medicine practitioner and then start working with them. And, and they're used to this. Uh, oftentimes they're the last person that somebody will see these chronic issues. That's right. Brian, what is, guys, uh, what is your, what, oh, is, ahead, Adam. what is your, um, training kind of look like? Like, what, do you follow maps right I was now? just actually, <laughs> I'm laughing because that was actually going to be my my follow-up question. Um, that's why I need your guys' help. I, I took a four weeks, uh, four months off completely of just walking, and it killed me. I mean, it maybe it's, it's just like it, without training and stuff like that. And I took four months off the beginning of the year, 
And then I tried to basically bring it back by focusing on what you guys said, intensity, volume, and sets. And I just started with bands. And I literally just tried to do like a um, a very rough like MAPS 15 of what you guys just like basically doing upper and lower body of just using bands. And like, I can't even recover from that. And oh, I just, wow. it kind of sucks just like walking all day because I don't want to be walking for the rest, yeah. for the rest of the year. It's just like, and um, I try to do mobility um i try to do some mobility um but it's it's getting to a point where i want to do I, I i know i shouldn't be doing more but for example like my shoulder gets my shoulder gets cranky and then my hips get cranky so it's it's to the point where it feels like i'm just basically mobilizing them i'd rather be strengthening them so i don't mm -hmm. have to i want to I, I i don't want to be mobilizing all the time either it's kind of like it's 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 that kind of thing if yeah. that makes sense no, well, I'm just like I, interesting. Just like the bands are even getting them that sore. Yeah, yeah. this this sounds. Yeah, yeah this there's yeah. there's definitely there's something happening. Yeah, especially yeah. for for uh, somebody your age, um, you're young, um, you've had a fitness background. Uh, it 100 would work with a functional medicine practitioner. What yeah. that's a 100 the direction I would go to see if they could start to identify some of the areas that that need help, and and they're the best people for the job for for something like what you're saying. That's, yeah. that's where I would go hundred percent. And I would just say, okay, let's, let's see what this, and it, it can be a long process of work. I know and this might be too of a hard of a question, but what do you suggest? Just obviously nothing intense training, but is that a functional medicine question or is there anything I can do besides walking? So I don't feel, there, I don't always feel horrible with my shoulder or my hips or I mean, anything without knowing. I know that might be too of a hard of a question. Uh, it's not that it's a hard question. It's just that we know what the functional, they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you to get yeah. to, to heal yourself first before, you, especially okay. if you did a, like, it sounds like you did a pretty good job of, of regressing all the way yeah. down to something like MAPS 15 <laughs> and then doing and dance. Yeah. If you've regressed that low and, yeah. and that still sending you in these like prolonged periods of sore and chronic, like that's not a good sign. Have you been so, tested yeah, for, I know. have you been, yeah. I'm sure you have, but have you been tested for thyroid antibodies? I'm pretty sure I, um, thyroids. I want to say yes. Antibodies. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm, I, I, I want to, I want to guess without looking at the blood work. Yes. Because at the Mayo clinic, I just, yeah, they basically did all types of tests that they can get there that they, they they basically did everything that that okay. i could get my hands on so okay um, okay yeah <laughs> let's I, I, dr go, cabral yeah go functional medicine yeah, yeah. go yeah, functional okay. medicine yeah take it there and they're going to look at the whole picture and again in my experience they're they've, they're pretty successful and that's uh and it's and it's amazing considering the people they work with are typically people like you who've been like i've been to every doctor yeah. i don't know what to they're almost never Almost never do people go to a functional medicine practitioner first. It's always the, the fourth or fifth choice. So they deal with really tough cases. Mm -hmm. So that's wow. that's that would be the place I'd go for sure. All right, thanks guys. Yeah, yeah. I hey, Brian, yeah. Brian, follow up with this. I would, I really Please. would like. Yeah, after you see, mystery. after you see Cabral, I would really like to hear uh, for us. I'm just curious of what, what what it is. So when you get to the bottom of it, please loop us in. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys always following up with people and I, I'm watching your videos, Adam. I'm jealous. So I, but, but I'm glad that you're, uh, that you're working back to where, yeah. where you yeah. need, So I was going to originally okay. tell you to watch that, but then when I heard you say that, you I know I'm trying to like, some days I'm watching you and then some days I try to put it off because it's, it's, it sucks. Not I, can, I can Brian, only, I can only imagine, bro. Brian, any, any, any strange symptoms? I mean, besides like can't recover fatigue, energy, like any strange symptoms, like neuropathy. I don't know if it's strange, but I just try to keep things simple. And like with my recovery, like my grip strength, even doing bands, it's just like to the point where I know I shouldn't be doing it. But when I even do bands, like my hands, like they turn discolored like purple because of lack of blood flow and oh, just like, and, they, and my knuckles basically, if, if I don't, if, if I try to do any type of exercise mm. and I know I don't recover, they start turning like red and just, it, it's just like my grip strength is, and, and, and the color of my knuckles just is not normal. So you've been um, tested for Raynaud's disease. I want to, I'm writing it down. I, I'm pretty sure maybe that came up on my Google search. Um, yeah. I'm not sure they did, but um, I'll, I'll put that in my notes. And did you get an um, MRI to test your uh, your central nervous system for any autoimmune issues like MS? Yeah, they did like, like a CAT scan MRI. Okay, okay. I, All right, good. Or like everything like a neurologist. Okay. But I'm not sure what you said. They, I've seen like every type of neurologist. That's good. And it, 
Well, yeah. that's good. I'm glad they ruled that out because that'd be scary. But yeah. um, okay, functional medicine. Yeah, I go functional yeah. medicine for sure. And it sounds hmm. nervous system related. Yeah, there's if, something. If, going if you're on noticing here. discoloration in your hands, sounds. But you know, the nervous system's interesting. It it can react and respond to a lot of uh, different things, including not just nutrient deficiencies, but uh, sometimes toxic levels of nutrients um, or, or heavy metal uh, toxicity and stuff like that. So sometimes it's, it could be something strange. Like I had a client once who had all these really strange symptoms and it turned out she, she had some toxicity from, of all things, B vitamins, which are water soluble, but it took so long for her to figure it out. So um, yeah, functional medicine practitioners, they look at everything. That Definitely go there. Okay, great. Yeah, Brian, right, man. your case is really interesting, bro. Please keep us in the loop. I, I, I want to. Yeah, I, thanks, guys. I, I want to help you get to the bottom of this, man. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. All right, Brian. You got it, brother. All right, have a good week. You too, man. I wow. hate that. Yeah, that's a that's a fucking tough one, dude. As soon as he said, like, I was yeah, literally nothing. gonna push him in the direction of the, the docu series, and as soon as he said he reduced all the way to a maps fifteen yeah. with bands, yeah. Yeah. and he was that sore from that. That's yeah. like Something super regret. And, and then the discoloration in his hands. Yeah, Raynaud's disease is uh, is typically what causes that, um, but not always. But it is interesting. What's uh, the ones where your limbs get like really cold and the blood flow doesn't get to it really cool? What's that called? Mm, That's not Raynaud's. Know, but, no, is, but the, yeah, the, the discoloration, the purple coloration of the hands and stuff can also cause that kind of tingling and coldness. Yeah. And I was, I'm, I'm glad they did an MRI on them because um, some pretty scary autoimmune issues that, that can cause some of that stuff. <laughs> Uh, so that's cool that they ruled that out. So uh, I'm interested, and I'm wondering if there's some kind of toxicity. Mm -hmm. You know, often sometimes, I mean, I've had a couple. Not a lot. It's not a lot. Okay, to be honest, but I have a couple clients that yeah. have these really like weird symptoms, to and then they finally did some, something, and they're like, "Oh, I have metal. mold toxicity." Uh -huh. You know, and it's like, and nobody tested for that. Nobody yeah. tested for that until they got to the functional medicine practitioner. Yeah, yeah. Our next caller is Chris from Canada. Chris, what's up, man? What's up, Chris? Hey guys, how are all you doing? Good, good. We're good, Great. man. Good. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. You got yeah. it. How can we help you? Uh, good. I'll just start off by saying I've been watching you guys for probably about a year now. Uh, glad I stumbled onto your podcast and really appreciate uh, your common sense, no BS approach to everything. It's uh, really resonated with me over the past year and I've learned a lot. Awesome. Thank uh, you, Chris. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, okay, so what can we help? Uh, what can you help out with? Uh, you could help out with a lot. Uh, but I sent in a summary about a, uh, about a month ago now, uh, I think at the beginning of uh, September. So I'll just go over a quick bio. Uh, I'm 43 years old, uh, five, nine and a half, uh, weighing in at about 180, 181 today. I uh, had an in-body scan, uh, found a place that does them for a reasonable price uh, back at the beginning of September, sitting at 21.6% uh, uh, body fat. Uh, been training consistently past year and a half, uh, probably the best of my life. Before that, it was always kind of an on and off thing. Never strung together, a, you know, good amount of consistency. So I did that. Uh, everything's going well with the consistency part of training. Uh, for the first year, I didn't focus too much on the nutrition side. It was just nailing down the consistency of getting to the gym and training, weightlifting. Uh, I get in about two to three full body workouts uh, per week, a uh, couple half hour sessions of cardio. Uh, last four months, uh, uh, that uh, trend has continued uh, two to three full body workouts, 8,500 average daily step count and a uh, couple sessions of cardio. Uh, my first question really centers around the caloric intake. Uh, I decided to start, uh, you know, really focusing on that in May. The first thing I did was cut out uh, the nighttime junk food, that was always my kind of Achilles heel there. Uh, you know, the sweets, chocolate and chips. Uh, so I did that quite well. And I was surprised to see that the the scale wasn't moving. Uh, I think I might heed uh, Adam's advice and ditch the scale because admittedly, I became a little uh, too obsessed with uh, multiple weigh-ins. Uh, 
but I decided to finally start tracking calories uh, at the beginning of August. And I think I did made it, make a mistake because uh, at the same time, I also decided to start trying to cut. Uh, but the goal I have in my mind now is hitting 175. Uh, but most importantly is uh, getting down to maybe 18% body fat from 21.6. So you know, more importantly would be the body fat goal. Uh, so when I started tracking, I kind of got it in my mind that uh, maybe about 2,500 was my maintenance. So I started at 2,000 and uh, kind of made my life a little miserable. I was, uh, my hunger was ravenous, uh, uh, sleep not so good, uh, uh, performance in the gym. In my, sum in my summary, I said it was significantly impaired, but uh, I wouldn't say significantly, but it was uh, certainly impaired. And uh, even when I bumped up to, say, 2,400, uh, I was still kind of feeling uh, lethargic. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I haven't tracked for the last couple weeks uh, because I'm going to Hawaii next week. Yeehaw. Uh, but just looking for some advice uh, for when I get back. Uh, what you think in terms of, you know, putting my head down and trying to cut or continue a cut or spending another month to track and find that true maintenance or perhaps uh, reverse diet, uh, maybe, uh, you know, set 2,500 or, you know, go up to 26, 27 or just find that kind of sweet spot uh, for everything. What do you think, guys? Yeah, Chris, I like the idea of trying to find the Goldilocks zone or the sweet spot uh, that you're alluding to. I think that you picked up on it pretty well, that your body was telling you, hey, this is not enough calories. I need more for the work that I'm doing. I think actually what you originally did by just cutting out the sweets was probably a really nice spot to be. You probably reduce calories naturally just by cutting out the junk at nighttime and was, but yet still giving yourself enough of what the body needs. I think when you actually went into the cut was what you did was you just kind of overcorrected uh, on that and went too far too fast. And you probably could have just hovered right around that, whatever that calorie intake was uh, when you were just cutting out sweets. And so what I would do before you actually uh, commit to a number, when you get back from Hawaii is just say, you know what I'm going to do? Um, is I'm just going to eat when I'm hungry, but I'm going to make good choices. And I'm, I'm going to eat whole foods. I'm going to go after my protein. Let's see where my body, where my, my calories kind of land by doing that, by listening to the body's natural signals of hunger, feeding it, but just making good choices, seeing where that kind of lands. And then also kind of how you feel after a week or two of sitting at that number. And then we would go from there. And if it's really high, like 3000 plus. Okay. Well then we could probably cut down to like 2,800 or something like that. But what you might find is it might just kind of hover right around 26 to 27, 2,800 calories, which is probably a nice place where you can build some muscle and lose some body fat. And then I would tell you to hover around there. Um, and, and then maybe talk about our programming. It's, uh, what were you running when you, when this all happened this last time, what program of ours? Uh, I, uh, I have ran anabolic twice. Uh, admittedly, uh, I didn't get the trigger sessions in, so I probably left something on the table there. Yeah. Uh, so certainly when I get to my next, uh, programs, uh, you know, I'll incorporate those. Uh, that was the, uh, part two or the second question is I've got, uh, uh, performance and aesthetic bundle. Uh, I think I purchased what's called the sexy mod bundle, yeah. uh, from Margaret a couple months ago. I've just put those, uh, in the queue, uh, until after I get back from Hawaii. So, performance. uh, that was the, uh, I would do, performance. Oh, yeah, I would do performance next. Yep. And, um, you know, the mistake you made was guessing what, a, what your caloric intake should be or guessing what your maintenance was. Nobody ever knows. It's like, even if I try to guess, I'm always off. So, I mean, what Adam said is perfect. And then track, track what that does. And then you'll get an idea of where your maintenance is. And then you can make a decision if you want to bump or, or drop. But I think if you stayed right around maintenance and hit your protein targets with whole natural foods and followed performance, I, I think, well, I'm pretty confident what you would see is this nice 
progression of muscle gain with some fat loss at the same time. And that's a nice place to be. Chris, are you watching the docu-series I'm doing right now? Uh, I caught your first uh, your first session there. I haven't watched uh, since then, but uh, we'll certainly tune in for sure. Yeah, yeah. Throw that on on your plane ride and watch that and get caught up because a, a lot of what you're kind of going through is uh, you hear me kind of communicate that and work through this process uh, on camera, right? So like the steps I'm taking to find my caloric maintenance, how what I'm focusing on at first, not making any crazy changes, not letting the scale get in my head. Like you literally all the stuff that we're talking about right now, like you get to hear me kind of work that out uh, through the process. So, and I'm coming up on week four right now uh, and we'll do my body fat test to see how we've done so far. Um, but I think it'll be super beneficial where you're currently at your headspace. Uh, and then taking the, the advice that I, we just gave you already, I think the combination of that and then following performance is going to be the, is going to be the road for you. Totally. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll heed that advice. One thing that I'm happy with uh, with the month that I tracked the calories, I did hit. Uh, I think my average was uh, 0. 0.91 grams per pound oh, for good. Good. Uh, protein. Good. Uh, was some of that would be whey protein, That's right. uh, one or two scoops. So. Uh, uh, yeah, that was just to supplement to make sure I hit those targets. So I'm happy with that. Uh, That's, so I think, yeah, the main thing is just kind of letting go of the, letting go of that body fat and weight goal number. And, uh, yeah, just finding that sweet spot, right? Yeah, yeah. You were on the right track. I think you just overcorrected. I think you really were heading down the right path. And then you, you probably got overzealous and decided to try and push more and do more and you didn't need to. And so, yeah, I mean, I saw already that because you you listed in there what your protein was, or else that would have been one of my first questions to make sure that we're reducing body fat and hang on to that muscle. But you're doing good. I think you're doing really good. Uh, get caught up on the docu series. Are you in our private forum, Chris? I am not. Okay, I'll have Doug, I'm gonna have Doug hook you up and put you in there. So, Perfect. and then when you get back from Hawaii and you get back on track, uh, just check in with us. Let us know what uh, what it, what it's looking like for you, and then we can help make adjustments if you need to. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, I also, I guess that would be a second part of the, you're suggesting performance. Uh, and I was looking at that and it looks uh, pretty, pretty interesting. I like the variety of exercises. Uh, I also did uh, see a personal trainer at my gym uh, just for an intake session. I haven't committed to anything, but it looks like he wants to put me on a, a five day PPL split. So I'm just kind of mulling over whether I, uh, you know, want to do that. I more wanted, uh, you know, personal trainer just on form checks and stuff like that. Uh, Chris, how long have you been working? run you through performance. Yeah, and see, how long have you been strength training consistently? Uh, yeah, coming up a year and a half now. If you mm -hmm. have a trainer that tells you to lift five days a week, then find another trainer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. had a feeling you'd say that. I had yeah, a feeling yeah. Here, here's say what's, that. Uh, here's what's way, happening. They're trying to hit their session target for the week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's just the truth. And that's not really a good trainer. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, if I trained you, I would train you two days a week and have you work out once on your own. That's what I would train you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my first uh, trainer at that gym, he happens to be the owner of the gym and he just opened up another one. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's a little too busy to keep me on. Uh, he had me uh, originally on a three-day total body yep. uh, That's split, it, yes. which, which worked well. But way, way, yeah, better, way, better, way better, way better, way better, way better trainer. Just so you know, though, Chris, part of why, so I'm throwing you in the forum. <clears throat> one of the most popular ways to utilize that and get the value out of it is uh, people will post their videos of them doing squats and stuff, and we'll actually help you with cues. So, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I will obviously, if you have a great trainer, we're always uh, encouraging people to, if they can afford it, to have a coach or a trainer in person because it, that it's invaluable. But, uh, I mean, we do a pretty good job of helping people out in the forum when they post up videos. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of other, you got Dr. Brink in there, Dr. Jordan Shallow in there, you have us in there. So you get a lot of uh, really intelligent coaches and trainers that are helping. So it's a great community to be a part of. So totally. hopefully you'll get that from just being in there alone. Yeah. So hopefully that Look makes sense. Look forward to seeing well. you in there, man. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. I love that. Definitely will utilize it. And uh, I had a feeling that would be your nutritional advice. And uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. And I'm sure my uh, family members will appreciate that too, because admittedly at the low calories, uh, you know, 
just wasn't the most uh, <laughs> enjoyable father or, of course. or husband there. So. Of course. Right well, thanks, Chris. Yeah. Have fun in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Keep us posted, Chris. We'll see you in the forum. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your day. You, you got too. it. All right. Yeah, two, two points to, to highlight here. One, uh, don't try to guess what, your, what would be a deficit for you. Uh, because you have no idea, and there's a there's a radical difference between individuals. You got to track and then figure it out, and then go from there. Otherwise, you're going to be off. You're always off. You're, all, you're I've you're never always... met anybody that hit it on the yeah. nose. Nobody this, just knows off the top second. Of their head. The, the second point: if you're a trainer watching this, and, and you hire, and somebody hires you, and, and unless they're an advanced bodybuilder, st- don't encourage them to hire you five sessions a week. And that's bad for the client. It's also bad for your business. If somebody actually pays to train with you five days a week, the odds that they'll stay with you for longer than a few months yeah. is zero because the cost is through the roof and they're going to burn out. And people don't work out five days a week consistently strength training unless they're super advanced fanatics. Yeah. And most people who hire you are not those people. So I mean, what a, di- what a crazy difference right there, the two people that he had. That's he's, right. He's met. The owner, yeah. who's probably very experienced yeah, probably versus do. some new yeah. trainer that's trying to totally. hype him up. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yeah. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.